When we first saw the release of ChatGPT and some other generative AI models, the goal has always been to generate human-like responses for machines. And aside from being a really insane milestone to reach, it does make life a whole lot easier. Now, Meta is taking this whole concept of getting human-like responses up a notch by also designing a program that will allow machines to have human-like reasoning as well. And they have chosen an area in the generative industry that hasn't really been heating up like the LLMs, which is computer vision. Moreover, this will be a step further for Meta in that area as they have already made their debut there prior to this moment. If you're one that's been on the generative AI trend for the past months, you must have heard about Dino V2, which is also another project on computer vision from Meta. It's really important if we're going to understand why iJeppa is a game changer. Also, before we go into all that, it's important to really get the whole background information around iJEPA, so let me quickly point out that iJEPA stands for Image-Based Joint Embedding Predictive Architecture, and you can see that right here from the title of the paper. Here, Meta is detailing the functionality of this new approach, titled Self-Supervised Learning from Images with a Joint Embedding Predictive Architecture. So let's dive into it. The Joint Embedding Predictive Architecture is a self-supervised approach to machine learning which was proposed by Jan LeCun from Meta AI in 2022. And it's really crazy what they're doing with this technology. The system is designed for semantic representations of images by predicting missing information in an abstract representation space. For a better understanding of what this does, let's take a close look at these images here and you'll find these in the paper. As you can see here, there are sections in these images that have been blocked out, thereby distorting the image. Now, what iJEPA does here is it can analyze the other parts of the image and will be able to fill in the missing part using a new image that fits with the rest of the image. For instance, we have these images of a husky here. The first one in the row here has what is the original image, then followed by a series of other images with sections blocked off. And the most insane thing here is seen from the fourth row right here. You see that the AI has been able to fill in the missing part perfectly by adopting even the pose. The description right below here says, for each image, first column contains the original image, second column contains the context image, which is processed by a pre-trained iJEPA VITH-14 encoder. Green bounding boxes in subsequent columns contain samples from a generative model decoding the output of the pre-trained iJEPA predictor, which is conditioned on positional mask tokens corresponding to the location of the green bounding box. Meta is really doing great stuff with this, as there will be very many applications for this technology. And just like some other generative models created by Meta, they have made iJEPA open source. And I don't really know, but it seems we've seen a similar technology with this generative fill that Adobe introduced a few days ago. Pretty amazing stuff, as you can just easily extend images by overlapping the tool in a section of the image that you'd like to extend. And back to iJEPA, it makes use of the generative method of self-supervised learning in generating these images. And when it concerns computer vision, there are basically two methods that can be adopted in the training of the model which are either the invariance-based method or the generative method. Jan LeCun's idea offers a means to skip the obvious limitations that the invariance-based method presents to adopt the more human-like generative method. The generative training method is considered to be more human-like than the invariance-based method because it's basically based on the same process that the human sensory system employs when processing images. Now, the invariance-based pre-training method requires that the AI is trained on distorted data of images so that it can learn to identify these images no matter what form it appears, thereby remaining invariant to the prompts. And as you can see from this video right here, which is also a demo for Dino V2, the AI achieves its goals by tracking pixels. However, this isn't close to what the human vision process is like. The human visual system isn't invariant to changes in illumination, pose, or other factors, but it is able to learn to recognize stuff even with these changes. The generative training method works in a similar way, by learning to generate images of objects that are invariant to these changes. So the method adopted with the invariance-based method basically makes it a lot more difficult for the AI, as it's not always possible to find features that are truly invariant. 
As a result, invariance-based methods are often less robust to changes in the input data and so are prone to more bias in image generation than generative training methods. Instead of comparing pixels as the invariance method would, the generative method just compares the visible parts of images to what it must have seen during training and is able to fill in the missing parts. This is basically how humans have a mental picture of something before drawing. This is really, really impressive stuff and will make it a lot easier to make physical robots way more effective than it would normally be if eventually if it's infused in them. Now, here's a little approach to fully understanding the generative method. Just picture yourself trying to recognize maybe the face of someone you're familiar with from a distance. You could try to find features of their face that are invariant to changes in lighting, such as the shape of their nose or the distance between their eyes. However, this would likely be a difficult task and it's possible that this person's face would not have any truly invariant features and might not be really visible. So one really effective way to recognize this person's face would be to generate a mental image of their face. This mental image would be invariant to changes in lighting and it would allow you to recognize this face even if its appearance had changed. That's basically how the human mind works. The generative training method tilts a lot closer to this mental image. It learns to generate images of objects that are invariant to changes in the input data. This makes it more adaptive to changes in the input data and makes it more human-like and way more suitable for computer vision. And a summary of this is presented right here in the conclusion and says, We proposed iJEPA, a simple and efficient method for learning semantic image representations without relying on handcrafted data augmentations. We show that by predicting in representation space, iJEPA converges faster than pixel reconstruction methods and learns representations of a high semantic level. In contrast to view invariance-based methods, iJEPA highlights a path for learning general representations with joint embedding architectures without relying on handcrafted view augmentations. As I did mention earlier, Meta has been carrying out a lot of open source programs, unlike other companies that really hold dear to what they make. Many say that companies like Google have been a bit more secretive than most during this period. However, this Times publication speaks to the fears that come along with it. Take a look here. It says, As a race to lead AI heats up across Silicon Valley, Meta is standing out from its rivals by taking a different approach to the technology. Driven by its founder and chief executive Mark Zuckerberg, Meta believes that the smartest thing to do is share its underlying AI engines as a way to spread its influence and ultimately move faster toward the future. There's certainly no doubt that this move will do all that they said it would, but it also means that any defect that is found in any of these designs will spread a lot faster. And the implication of having a defective AI reach AGI is one that's been described as existential. And for a minute, let's imagine, okay, everything is good with the design, and they in fact work really great, but we still have a human factor in play here. Somehow, these codes to sophisticated systems are likely to end up in the hands of bad players. However, all we can do now is hope that there are safeguards in place to mitigate against this. And I wonder if issues like this are among what Sam Altman makes reference to in his recent interview he had with Bloomberg when he reiterates that big tech companies have to be regulated to an extent. And in case you're interested in the details of this interview, I do have a video on this that was posted recently, and I'll leave the link in the description. However, looking over the safety concerns, Meta is really going to leave a lot of footprint in the coming months if they keep this up, as a lot of startups will depend on the open source models that they can lay their hands on for their own use. And iJEPA really changes everything when it comes to image generation. There are a lot of ways this can aid different startups to get into the competitive world of a range of work tools that can be made from this, and we're beginning to see already existing companies infusing AI to help optimize user experiences. Well, that's all we have on this, and I'll leave the link to the paper in the description. We'll see you in the next video.